up close and personal with racers and people of interest in the motorsports world, it's In the Groove, brought to you by Blue Line Graphics. And now, here's your horsepower and performance host, Terry Bridges. Hey, what's going on, racers? I'm your horsepower and performance host, Terry Bridges, and you are hooked up in the groove. Um, what is in the groove? In the groove is a way for racers and race fans. I just thought it would be something uh, really cool to get to know and get a little more up close and personal other than just um, at the racetrack where you get to kind of get to know them a little bit more intimately. Now, obviously, we're not going to go give you a bunch of their personal information, but we are going to try to... Uh, hook you up and and have you get to know your favorite racers and not just the hot dogs but but racers in general and people of interest uh within our great sport so um tonight I get to kick things off with, in my opinion, probably uh, one of the uh, finest wheelmen you'll find anywhere in the Speedway ranks. And uh, I'm sure there's there's many good ones, but this guy does stand out. He's a, a big player in the uh, Unlimited All-Stars, and uh, that is Chris C's uh, wheelman, uh, Robbie Yao. Robbie, welcome to the show, my man. I'm just uh, so thankful that uh, you're doing this for me. Hey, Terry. Thanks for having me, man. Uh- no worries. So, you know, let's uh let's kind of kick things off let's let's let our listeners know who Robbie Yao really is so your so your name is Robbie correct yes and 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 you said your parents named you after someone yeah um they they had a friend um that had a uh, the, the initials that they had um were basically um RCY and basically that was uh the initials uh that they wanted to keep and basically my mom liked the name Robbie because it, it was it's unique you you don't hear much much people with the name Robbie and the way that it's spelled so you know usually it's like an abbreviation for like Robert or Rob or you know some but it's right it's literally just Robbie just and is, Robbie. is it spelled R O B B Y or is it I, I or how how do you... It's uh, it's spelled with a Y. Not, uh, most people think it's with an I E, but it's it's unique because it's it's the way it's spelled with a Y. That's cool. That is that's really cool. And so, what's the C stand for? Uh, Christopher. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Robbie Christopher. That sounds pretty cool. That sounds really cool. So, when's your birthday? Uh, my birthday is November sixteenth, nineteen ninety. Wow. You're just a youngin. So that puts you twenty six. And your your sign is. Uh, my sign is a Scorpio. Wow, that's cool. Now, how about how about brothers and sisters? Did you do, do you have brothers and sisters? Um, actually, no, I don't. Um, basically, my mom and dad had me. They said one one was enough, so they, they just uh they just stopped at one. Wow. So, so how child. how was that growing up? Just being an only child. Um, it, I mean, it, it was a good experience. I mean, you know, when I was growing up, I kind of wished, you know, for like a a younger brother or younger sister, but you know, uh. Pretty much, you know, I was just thankful for the family that I have and the family that I have to this day. I mean, just, you know, I wouldn't ask ask for anything other. I mean, it was just an all-around great experience. It, it is, you know, and at the end of the day, um, family's really all you got, you know, when the, when the chips are down. So it's huge. So now, so you don't have any, you're an only child born and raised in Greensboro, North Carolina. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. And so tell me a little bit about Greensboro. I mean, how, okay, so as a only kid, how, how was it growing up in, in Greensboro? Uh, growing up in Greensboro, it's, um, it's kind of, uh, here in North Carolina, Greensboro is kind of what, what we, uh, we call like, uh. The, the triad area it's the triad area of uh greensboro um Winston, winston-salem and uh charlotte area and it's like basically just a three uh triad area and that's uh pretty much just uh the towns that are closest in the the triad and it's it's, it's a fairly big uh big town it's not as big as charlotte is but you know there's there's always things to do in greensboro um it's you know 10 minutes from you know the city to 10 minutes from the country you know you, it's just a great experience um for, for me it is right uh, for being for being here you know it's it's you know uh kind of just you know thankful for, for growing up where i did yeah well so so growing up did you were you did you did you spend a lot of time by yourself or or did you did you have uh, lots of friends because with no brothers or sisters you know you got to kind of learn to entertain yourself i mean did you do a lot of stuff by yourself uh yeah um when uh growing up um you know pretty much uh 
you know, I'd be in school, and then whenever um, I'd get out of school, I would either be, um, you know, doing an after 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 school event like such as sports, um, you know, basketball, baseball, uh, swimming, um, track. Uh, but you know, like when, like in my younger childhood, um, uh, basically I would spend most of my time, um, out at my grandparents. Okay. Uh, and th- they, they lived, uh, in the country in a little, little, uh, town called Climax. Um, and that's basically where I would, um, basically where I would spend most of my, most of my childhood years were spent out there, uh, on a, on their little, little family farm they had. So, so is that kind of where you kind of started learning the tricks of your trade i mean was was grandpa fairly mechanical or um well that was my mom's side of the family uh, my dad's side's basically where the racing generation got started i, I didn't get started into racing until i was about seven and uh basically i started in what was called uh rookie uh rookie um rookie purple one and wow. it was back in the flathead days um, yeah Pretty much just basically uh, before I even got, got to a dirt track, um, my dad would always take me on every Wednesday after he got off work to a uh, local asphalt track that a uh, buddy had on in his backyard uh, named John Umble and Steve Umble. And basically I would just run lap times after lap times after lap times. And I would basically go there every uh, Wednesday and Sunday until, until you know, the day came that dad thought I was ready to – race on dirt um and that way i had some experience before he actually threw me out there right so so you learned you learned on asphalt but your first actual race was on the dirt uh yes uh, well, well technically um uh, my first ever race was actually against my dad he uh kind of had a go-kart and we you know he basically would take me to this asphalt track i would learn the flags that was the main thing that i first learned was flags right and basically i would always uh I would do that, and then me and him actually raced one time before um, I hit the dirt on asphalt, but it was a small, like, I'd say probably maybe a tenth of a mile asphalt track, not not too big, just, you know, just a little small small asphalt track, and basically that would be technically uh, my first race, but my first official race um, would be, uh, it was at a uh, racetrack uh, called Ether, and uh, it's a uh, it's one of the tracks that it was such a good track, but you know it just it didn't make it throughout the years, and it ended up uh, shutting down. But wow, um, that was basically uh, my first race was at a racetrack uh, called Ether, and then uh, you know, race different race tracks, you know, until um, until I was probably in uh, junior two, I, then I then I ventured out and started running the uh, WKA National Series. That's crazy. So now, so so now, this this track that was in your was in your uh, your your buddy's backyard, was it an oval or was it a was it a, a road course? Um, it was an it was an oval. Um, okay, okay. They uh the guys that uh had the uh, asphalt track they were they were renowned asphalt racers uh uh, and they they basically would run at um I believe the racetracks they would run at would be like Orange County and Concord Speedway. Oh yeah. Um, so uh, they would basically run there, and they just – it, it was funny because uh, they, they, there was an article about them because uh, their first – whenever they first came to dirt, nobody had ever heard of the Umble Brothers. And then next thing you know, they're sitting on, um, you know, first and second, you know, of every race, and they're winning every single race. Wow. It, so, you know, it was, it was you know, it was a good experience, um, you know, getting to, you know – you know, at least practice on, you know, one of their tracks. Sure. Girl. Are you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, okay. Boy, that, that does sound awesome. So, so I mean, I, I guess my question to you is, uh, have you always been interested in, um, have you always been interested in motorsports? I mean, was it something that just came natural? I mean, do you think you would have gravitated to it if uh, your dad wouldn't have taken you out there every every wednesday uh yeah um cuz i remember um you know growing up cuz dad he um he he raced uh go-karts and you know i can always remember you know him working on his stuff and then me outside you know when i was a little bitty just tinkering around with um everything he had and then you know i think you know it was kind of you know he he wanted me to race um you know just i guess he had to get the approval from mom first <laughs> right but, 
Well, that's well, usually once, the way it always goes. Yeah, but once, you know, I think, you know, because Mom, she was always involved with me racing, which she still is involved. That's um, one of the luckiest things I'm, I'm able to to have is, uh, you know, family that, that's, uh, you know, oriented in what, you know, something something that I'm passionate about and that I love to do. Right. So now, is your dad still involved? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, he doesn't race, but um, we, uh, me and him have a... Uh, a uh, race shop for lo- our local racers here um, uh, at our two local tracks, which are uh, uh, Liberty Raceway Park and Coleridge Speedway. Um, and we, we have just a little, you know, just it, it's not a big shop, but, you know, it's just, you know, for the local guys that, that run around and, you know, they, if they need a part ordered or if they need something that we have in stock, you know, we can provide for them. And uh, my dad uh, does um, all the uh, engine uh, engine building and then i uh work on the uh customer's tires or if they need a tire you know it's kind of like a f- full end deal and we've had that uh business going for probably about three years now wow and what's the name of the shop high performance carding okay that's cool that is really cool um so you know let, let's go back a little bit so uh when you were in uh when you were in, in school I mean, were you were you a good student? Uh, yes. Uh, I was. Um, I, I never, you know, had you know, I wasn't in like, the, you know, ISS or or ONSS, but you know, pretty much, uh, I was a I was an AB, A honor roll student. Um, uh, you know, I, I basically, basically, uh, my whole, you know, high school was, you know, uh, basically, I went to school, I came home, I worked on go karts or, you know, racing, and then, you know, basically back out at school. I mean, it was pretty much, you know, that was, you know, basically me growing up was, was that uh, kind of ordeal. Right. Now, did Dad demand you were a good student, or was that just something that just kind of came to be? Um, It was kind of a privilege. I mean, if, if I, you know, if, if I ever did, uh, you know, I, and I wasn't doing good in school, basically it was I do good in school, I can race. If I don't, you know, basically, you know, I didn't earn the the right or privilege to race, so why should I be rewarded to race for doing something not good? So basically, it was pretty much I was I was always a good student uh, because you know I knew that if I if I wasn't, then there would be a consequence and I'd have to pay for it. And I, I just loved racing so much and still do to this day that that was you know one of the things that I, I knew growing up that you know I had to you know keep my mindset on on you know basically have a goal and right. that was. Make good grades so I could go racing. <laughs> That's awesome. So now, what? So what was your best subject in school? Uh, my best subject was uh, by far math. Uh, math, and uh, I was uh, also in the um, uh, band. So th- those were probably uh, you know uh, bands like an extracurricular. But my my best subject by far was uh, math. Wow. See, I always hated math. I was terrible at it. It wasn't until I. Um, it wasn't until I, I started actually racing where you had to know the stuff. Did it? Did it? Did I get you know? And, and that's really not even math. I mean, by then I'd already screwed it up. But that that's that is so cool, man. So now music, um, are do you still play? Um, I play a little bit. Um, not as much as I used to. Um, basically, I would. I'll, uh, in high school, I was a. Uh, I was always a a, a a woodwind instrument like a alto saxophone or a tenor saxophone or a berry saxophone then when like concert band came around i would jump around to tuba wow so, so yeah it's it's kind of a big difference from going to that but you know i still play around a little bit i, I play a little bit of uh piano and uh, i i I'm, i've been trying to learn how to play guitar but quite haven't got that down pat yet yeah you gotta practice a lot for that that's for sure so yeah so music's a big part of your life then uh yeah I I do in, enjoy music um you know I I love to listen to any type of variety of music uh that there is um my 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 favorite type of uh, music to listen to is uh, jazz oh so. my God Robbie Yao we are we are uh I I just can't believe you just said that um because uh that that is dude I I got some stuff to turn you on to that will blow your mind if you if you like the jazz man I. That just warmed. Okay, you're definitely a good guy now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, man, that's really, really cool. Because everybody gets gets on me about it. They say, "Oh, man, you playing that elevator music again?" I'm like, "No, this is this is um, 
if you truly understood music, you would know that it's not just elevator music. But uh, wow, that's awesome. That is really awesome. So who was your favorite teacher when you were going to school? Oh, man. I had um, I had so many growing up. Uh, coolest teacher I had, honestly, um, uh, one of my coolest teachers was one of my science teachers. Uh, um, and his, his, his uh, he was uh, Coach Lore. And he was just by far the, the coolest teacher. First day, I mean, he, he taught uh, science. But the first day in his class, he basically exploded a Coke can in the room, and there was no, you know, basically just to get the class, you know, excited about science. It kind of reminded me of, like, Bill Nye. Yeah. Science. But, you know, that, that was by far one of the, the coolest teachers because just, you know, every 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 day was, like, a, a, you know, a fun experience in his class. But um, as far as, like, an all-around teacher that I had that was, like, you know, one that, that, that I always had uh, would be uh, one of my uh, – math teachers which was a uh, coach smith and he was a um, he was a uh, what well, he was basically we called him mr kiss because he was a huge kiss fan um, uh, oh really he, yeah he would always on friday he would always dress up as one of the kiss uh kiss characters that is way cool see that's that's how teachers should be don't you think i mean that that's yeah. uh what kid ain't gonna like that uh, you know, I, I, that that was, you know, that, that that was, you know, to me, one of the awesomest things, you know, seeing seeing my math teacher dress up as, uh, especially Gene Simmons or Star Child. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's badass. Yeah, that's that was that's probably that's probably one of the coolest teachers I had. But you know, uh, there there was always you know good teachers that I always had. Um, but as far as going as the you know ones that you know stick out in my mind, those are definitely the the, the two. Right. Now, was there one, is there one that you can remember that, I mean, just, um, just had a huge impact on maybe how you are now? I mean, that, that, you know, kind of confirmed, you know, going the right way and all that stuff. I mean, did you have one? I know I had one, but, um, it was there one or just kind of all of them together, uh, helping you out? Um, kind of all, all the teachers, they, they always wanted to, 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 to help me out. Um, but if I had to say if, um, one stuck out in my mind, um, it would have to be, um, it had to be my band teacher. Uh, he, you know, he always wanted us to better ourselves. Uh, his name was, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Jeremy Ray. And he would always, you know, want us to better ourselves, not just for, you know, the time that it was, but, you know, for our future. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he would always, you know, want us to prepare prepare ourselves you know just for you know like the trouble days and how to you know what we should do to get around them and just prepare us for life and you know that was you know one of the inspirational teachers that i had that that's cool you know i and i got kind of maybe a little bit of a search do you do you believe in god um i do okay do you are you are you uh do you attend church regularly on sunday or or um that's uh that's a, I try but um with the jobs that I have sometimes I'm I'm uh, I have to work on Sunday so I'm not really right able able to go but um uh actually uh uh the 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 uh, C family they uh they recently turned me on to they uh their their church which is in Chesney uh, I think Chesney South Carolina or Greenville South Carolina they uh they uh they have a uh, what's called like a web video it's like a live feed um and you know any chance i get i try to you know watch the their their church um service on uh on live feed so as far as going to church that's that's how i try to to go to church um but um sometimes i'm just not able to do to work sure i totally understand i get that yeah that's awesome though i mean uh really awesome well, you know, and that that kind of brings me um, to so, um, did you go to college? Um, I did go to college uh, for a few years, but then basically I just uh, I got I got burned out, uh, burned out from it, and you know just basically wanted to just start working. You know, it's kind of a you know tough ordeal. You know, kind of messed up and instead of you know basically taking it easy going to a community college for the first couple of years i basically went to a university and it was just you know it's uh, overwhelming it's, it's very it's very overwhelming that's like uh you know anybody that has asked me about colleges i kind of tell them i was like well 
a university is, you know, is more demanding, but, you know, getting a, you know, getting a head start, you know, through a community college is, to me, would have been, you know, the easier route, and I probably would have stuck with it, uh, but, you know, I just got burned out after, 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 you know, the, the few years that I, I went, and basically just uh, where I'm at now, uh, you know, I, I couldn't have been where I'm at now without some of the stuff I went to college for, but, you know, uh, uh, I'm in a good place, and I, I basically the, the job I have now, I, I, I love. What, so, what are you doing now? Um, I'm a uh, security communications uh, tech. Uh, basically, I uh, I can uh, I program us um, IP switches, uh, r um, run CCTV camera systems, uh, d uh, door access control for um, major law firms, and. Uh, uh, school districts um, in our local area. Wow. Um, fire alarm systems, security systems, uh, paging systems, data, um, data and voice over IP systems, uh, pretty much just anything that deals with like lo low voltage communication, um, I have my hands on. Wow, that's intense, man. That's really cool. So, so you know all, you know all about streaming and how to, how to, are you good at hooking all that stuff up? Uh yeah, um, I can say I'm 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 pretty decent at it. I mean uh, I'm I'm good at my job. Uh, so uh, I mean, so if I needed like, help getting some camera stuff going, you could probably help me. Yeah, I could I, I can definitely do that. I just actually finished a camera job uh here here in Greensboro this week, and right now the guy can view the uh, basically his uh, sixteen cameras that we just installed from his house. Wow. This uh, wow! This keeps getting better and better, Yao. I'm telling you. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. Well, so man, so life is good right now, then. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't change anything that I've, I've done. I mean, you know, I hear people always go back and they want to change something that they've done in the past. But I mean, right now, you know, I love the life I have, and I'm very blessed for what I do have. Right. So tell me, so tell me about your, you, you're not, you're, you're not married, but you have a significant other. So t t tell me a little bit about her. What's her name? Um, her name is Heather Ledford. And how'd you guys meet? Uh, honestly, we met at, uh, we met at a racetrack. Um, her, 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 um, stepdad, uh, was raced and, uh, he, uh, he actually, uh, works with us at our, uh, race shop. And pretty much we just, uh, we just, um, kind of met, met through the racetrack and, uh, uh, you know, basically, uh, we, we actually kind of met through, um, her daughter Mackenzie and pretty much from there, you know, I, I was, I was always at the track and I'd always, you know, talk, talk with her daughter and help, help her out. And then one thing led to another and we just, you know, decided to hang out one, one weekend away from the racetrack and, you know, we kind of just, just nonstop talked and, Pretty much, uh, it, it went from from that to us, you know, talking every day and um, seeing one another, and and here you are, is. yeah. Wow, that's a that's a cool, that's a cool feeling, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is cool. That's really sweet. That's awesome, man. So, you know, so tell me, um, how did your how did so how did the relationship with um. Because, you know, you've, you've won some big races and whatnot, but how did your relationship with Chris C. come about? Oh, man, I'd have to, I'd have to, honestly, that, that right there, um, I could, I could go back to, you know, from when I first started and how my relationship got with Chris C., uh, um, but right now, uh, the, the way me and Chris got started was uh, the 2012 season, 2011 season uh, was, was, was getting ready to start, and I was pretty much in a in in a place because i i just gotten um done running uh the race down in daytona the that christmas and pretty much uh basically i was running my own stuff and pretty much was having you know bad luck with the uh rotary engine the wankel and have kept having failures after failures blowing up so pretty much i didn't have a ride starting the 2012 season so i basically gave chris c um um, I can't remember if it was a call or if I uh, messaged him on Facebook, but pretty much me and him basically talked, and I basically asked him if um, if he had a ride that I could possibly, you know, start out on, 
um, you know, just just to help me, you know, start out my season. And he kindly uh, kindly told me that he had a driver, Daniel Simmons, that was supposed to race this race, but he had a backup. Um, so basically, I would be riding the backup go kart. And if uh, anything happened to Daniel's cart, that Daniel would, you know, be taking the backup ride. So I said, okay, well, I said, you know, that, that'd be fine. I just needed, I need, you know, I, I know you have good stuff. I just needed to, needed a ride. So um, pretty much, you know, he was that. And then later on that week, he called me and said that Daniel Simmons had to cancel his plans, wasn't going to be able to make it to the race that, you know, he, he would like me to, to ride his ride. So pretty much came down to uh, Possum Kingdom, South Carolina. Um, I think it was Belton, South Carolina is where that track's located at. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge, huge, probably a quarter mile just on the inside groove, the racetrack. Wow. Long, long straightaways, tight corners. So it's a paper clip. Pretty much. It's a paper clip. And pretty much uh, I've always, ever since uh, I've uh, been, you know, racing the unlimiteds that's been a track that i've never gotten the track record at and pretty much that day that i drove for chris we we um set set the track record broke it in qualifying and uh i think i think if i'm not mistaken we reset it in the race does it still stand um no uh uh, i I think um it might have been broken by one of the uh one of harold wiggins go-karts uh, a, a couple years later, but um, I'm not. I think it has been broken, but uh, it, it was basically, you know, this this is before the 500s and all that came out. Right, right. So, um, so, but um, it, 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 I think it can be broken again, and I'm <laughs> hoping it be broken by me because I tried for years to break it, and finally, you know, whenever I, I wasn't even thinking about breaking it, I broke it, and that... uh, you know, I was unaware that I had bro- broken it, and. You know, just just running that race with Chris, you know, pretty much started our our relationship. And ever since then, I've I've been running for Chris and uh, his family, and uh, I've basically am very thankful for the opportunity that they have given me. And you know, we've we've basically have made a good team. Yeah, there's no doubt you have. I mean, I don't think anybody with with a brain could even uh, deny that for sure. So. So, so before you kind of you drove for your dad more or less, right? I mean, yeah, dad, um, dad was hoofing the bills, but well, um, actually, in 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 just racing in general, uh, I rode for my dad, and then um, when I was about sixteen, um, one of our um, uh, one of my major sponsors, uh, Randy Ransom with Track Tech uh, Tire Treatments, uh, he uh basically was talking to my dad, and he he is. He is one of the the biggest fans of Unlimited All Stars. He is by far the biggest, you know, supporter fan. You know, that's that's you know, that's the racing Randy loves to to watch is the Unlimited All Stars. And he always told my dad about it. And he basically asked my dad that he had a race coming up at Liberty, and he wanted me to ride in it. And my dad was, you know, kind of like, "Are you sure? Um, you know, are you sure you, you want him to to run?" And, uh, Basically, uh, him and my dad had talked, and they agreed because you know I was only sixteen, so I was just running you know you know the the adult classes. I I, had, I wasn't running any high horsepower stuff yet. Right. So, him and my dad talked, and they got us. Um, uh, he, he my dad basically asked him the question, well, what what well whose stuff is he going to run? Because I don't have you know an open modified or a you know a, a, a unlimited motor to run. He and then Randy Ransom basically. Um, was was good friends with uh, Jackie Leak of Leak Racing Engines, and pretty much I uh, got got in in it with uh, Jackie Leak, and that's how I first started out. And um, my first race um, was um, on, with Jackie was on a limited modified with the pre the week before uh, the unlimited race, and I ended up winning winning that race. And then the next week, instead of running a limited, which my dad thought it was a open modified which was a Blockzilla, and, I, you know, I, I was, you know, soaking wet. I was probably maybe 110, 115 pounds. And, wow. You know, had, I had to weigh, like, 265 on it, and I weighed, like, 295, 305 coming across the scales. So, you know, it was basically the running against the Sedan 131s or the, you know, Briggs 392s or 342s and, you know, just twin flatheads, uh, limited modified or opens. Uh, there, there were there were no big motors. It was you know just you know just right. the sedan 
131s and I was on a Blockzilla and pretty much that's how I got it um got it got a start in it and one on my first unlimited race I ever ran I ended up winning it um and that's how I got started running with Jackie Leak and um uh, was basically uh, just getting me into UAS was uh, I have to thank Randy Ransom for doing that because you know I don't think I would have ever been you know brought onto the Unlimited without Randy's help. Wow. Well, so, so uh, go ahead. So I got to give Randy Ransom a big thank you for that. Yeah, I'll, yeah, for sure, Randy Ransom. I'm gonna thank you for that. Um, so, boy, the, the Limited Mod's a pretty good ride, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not as, um, you know, as fast as the unlimited or an open modified, but you know, limited modified it, you know, it's, it's, it's always fun to run one of those. Yeah. Cause okay. go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I saw him at the grand nationals, uh, at the four cycle grand, La uh, nationals. There was a guy named Tim Lawrence that had one and, um, boy, how did that thing flew? I mean, I just could oh. not believe it. Oh man, don't even get me started. I'll tell you, when I was running the WK National Series, the the the, the class that I always went up to watch, of course, was you know the uh, they had the unlimited class, or the, I think it was like the Yamaha 100 class. Yeah. But but then the next the, the class that I always you know other than those classes, the fast classes, the class I went up to watch was Star Champ, and it was a Tillerson motor or a, a Tecumseh motor. Okay. On a Champ buggy. Wow. And those are yes, the the sir. champs are the ones that have the basically have the full cage on them, right? Yeah, the yeah, the cage cards. Um, we we call them uh, champ buggies and our senior champs. And basically, it was just an adult champ buggy or a, a cage cart with a uh, Tillerson uh, ten. I think it was a ten horsepower motor mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. And that was you know by far you know because it was you know loud and it was you know fast. I was just like, well, dang. So and, and they then, called it the Star what? Uh, they called it the Star Champ. Okay. It, it, here's why I say that, Robbie, because I, I think you and I are, have something uh, else in common. Because uh, up here in the Northwest, there was a guy by the name of, uh, his name was Jim Petit. And if you go back and carding, Jim Petit was, um, I mean, you know, he was really big back in the day, uh, you know, back when, I mean, way back in, during the dark cart days and, and when Bug was first getting started and all this stuff. Well, Jim came out with that same Tecumseh. It was a 10 horse and he called it, um, it was, it was called the star class. And, um, uh, man, I'm trying to remember what the star, uh, stood for, but it, it, it was a uh, stable and, uh, like stable and affordable racing or something to that effect. And it, it, it caught fire, man. I mean, it caught total fire. They were just stock, but, I mean, they ran them at the IKF Grand Nationals, and so I, I wonder if somehow uh, that wasn't tied together through uh, Jim Petit somehow. I think that WKA stuff. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't know, um, you know, because I was probably maybe twelve or thirteen, you know, I really wasn't into knowing who started what, but I, I do know that that was one of the one classes that I always enjoyed watching. Yeah. That's far. That's yeah. That's uh. That's killer. So, did you do any uh sprint racing like the road race stuff, like on the sprint tracks or? No, I, I always I've always been. I mean, I've I've mainly been on dirt. Uh, the only asphalt stuff that I have done um is uh the uh North Carolina State um Winter Series that they had, and uh, I always I started running junior uh junior champ or what's now known as Teen Champ. And uh, pretty much that's how I got my start in asphalt. And I ran it for about two years in the winter. It was just the winter series I did because, you know, during the summer and um, spring and fall, I'm running, you know, dirt. Right. So during the off season, I would run the Junior Champ on, on asphalt. Right. Um, but no left that. and right, though. But no left and right. It was all just yeah, the oval stuff. The only time that I, I went left and right was uh, whenever uh, the C family and my family went to the uh, – we have a, a racetrack uh, here called the Mooresville Motor, uh, GoPro Motors Flex. Yes. And that's the only uh, left and right-hand sprint sprint racing that I've, I've – well, you know, it's just, you know, you, the, the carts they provide you with. But as far as, you know, getting on an actual sprint cart and running, I have not done that yet. But, 
it, it does seem fun to want to, you know, get get and want to try to do that. Yeah. Can you imagine a hundred open or something on one of them? I mean, that's what that that's what I did when I was working for Phil Fow. I mean, we did a, mainly sprint was what we did was the you know the left and right stuff. But I mean, can you imagine a set of duels on that? You know, I mean, it it, it would just I mean, it's 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 awesome if you've never seen it. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah. Um. I, I've 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 seen it. Um. Actually. Uh. I want to say my my um my dad's uncle Henry who used to race uh. Him and my grandpa used to do the uh, the lay down sprint. The the enduro stuff, yes. Yeah, they used to do the enduros. Mm hmm. Um, and those and, actually run on, you know, actual car tracks like at you know, yeah, Sears Point or I don't know Watkins Glen back there or wherever the the road race stuff is back there. Wow, cool. That that that's what um you know kind of kind of gotten that and you know, I I I I'm, I might be wrong on the engine, but uh. I forget what what they are, but they're like little bitty motors. And I, seeing how my grandpa would always do, he you have to bump the tires to get it to crank up or something. Oh, it was probably a well. I don't know. And sounds like it might be a direct drive, maybe, or I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it was direct drive or not, but he'd always uh, a B. He called them B bombs or something like that. Oh yeah, that was a that was a big motor. That was actually a pretty big motor. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, Comet made that, and it was a it was a 135. Yeah, um, they uh, he would run. Uh, I think I think twin B bombs. Oh yeah, did. so he was he was running the bad boy stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, <sighs> yeah. I mean twin. I mean that's 270 cc's right there, man. And if they yeah. were and if they were opened up, woo. Baby, that, that's that would be uh that'd be a ride right there. Trust me, that would be a real ride. Well, so tell me, what's the difference between driving, say, like for your dad, like you did? It's kind of family, but and then driving for a car owner. Is there is there a difference? Um, there is a difference. I mean, uh, one of the main differences, you know, it's it's your stuff. You know, kind of, you know, you gotta. You know, you you gotta you know work on it. You gotta make sure it's right. Uh, you know, you've gotta you gotta you basically gotta do it all. Um, you know, you've gotta do your tires. You've gotta make sure the engines are are you know properly done. You gotta make sure the go kart, if anything's you know, make sure it's ready for race day. Uh, pretty much just you know, you got a whole checklist you gotta go through. Make sure everything's done. And then, um, I, I pretty much uh pretty much kind of kind of found a niche with driving for people because um i would basically just show up at the racetrack with the tires and the and the uh racing prep track tech prep we would have and pretty much you know that's all we brought to the table the the cart owner brought the go-kart and you know he had he, he basically looked after the go-karts we brought the tires so you know i did that with um the first person i did that with was uh charlie stofa and I ran for Charlie for many years, and you know that's how basically I, that's how I won my my first two Grand Nationals was racing with Charlie, um, Stofa, and pretty much you know that was that was our you know one of the the biggest biggest steps stepping ups in um you know one of my first big step ups in the unlimited class was you know running for him, and then you know running for him for a couple of years, then we basically got back to running our own stuff. And, you know, it was more, you know, I had to do this and had to, you know, get this stuff ready, which um, doing that. But uh, as far as right now, you know, uh, being able just to have, you know, just just have to, you know, have to only worry about the tires. And then, you know, they and, you know, and the cart owner just worries about the go kart, make sure everything's right on it, which uh, that's basically um, how it is with uh, Chris, the, the, the Chris C family. Um, pretty much, you know, Chris, you know. I've always known Chris, um, you know, when he comes to the racetrack, his stuff is always in pristine looking order, like show quality order. And, you know, it, it you know, he always makes sure his stuff's right when he comes to the racetrack. Um, and, you know, with us adding to it, you know, we were always good with tires. So it, that, like I said, it, it's a pretty good package deal. I mean, you know, I always do my homework and, you know, like, you know, if if I'm going to a different track, I make sure you know I know what the track's going to be like. I know what the weather's like. I know what tires I'm going to need, so I know what to work. And you know, pretty much it's just just a team effort, basically. So even though you know they live, uh, Chris and them live in South Carolina, and we live in North Carolina, it's pretty much still a team effort. 
and we get we get a you know a game plan before we even go to the racetrack. That's a wow. So, so you know, so um, I guess there is a little difference because you don't have to work on the car really. You just have to make sure that your tires are in order and you kind of know what. Um, I mean, I'm sure you look at probably you know what you you guys talk about what gear you're going to put on it and that type of thing. Well, um, you know, we Chris um pretty much uh he does the gearing on it and then if uh you know like like say we go to a track and you know the the, the since we get running this 500, you know, my knowledge is, you know, if 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 the thing is out of control spinning, basically i tell chris i tell chris i was like you know it's 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 not hooking up on this track i said it's second round practice we're getting ready to go and qualify and i said I'll, you know i'll talk with him and i'll be like look we need to throw more gear on it so we can you know lug the motor so it's not spinning the tires it's so it's hooking up and you know and then i, I got to work my tires down get them to where it hooks up a little bit better so it's kind of a we do talk about that but as far as you know coming to the racetrack chris right. you know, pretty much has everything ready to sit down and race it's you know it's it's pretty much just ready ready to 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 get on the track it just needs tires and you know from from when we get to the track we unload we get everything set up and then once we get everything go-kart wise set up we get our tires um set up um and if you see us at a racetrack we'll have tires i mean we don't just come you know that's 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 one thing i'll say is is what's lucky about it we're able just to do the tires and you know focus on the tires during the week so you know we um we have you know we, I, i've known you know coming to a racetrack you know it's it's you, you kind of have to come to a racetrack and you know you can't just bring one set of tires you got to have at least two maybe three sets but we're lucky that you know we run so many different brands of tires that we've accumulated um that we bring probably maybe at least about eight sets to ten sets of tires because um, that's all we can fit in the back of my dad's truck wow and, we don't we don't bring you know like 50 sets of tires um at, at all i mean it's it's pretty much 10 sets that's all we can bring but that's still but, 40 know, tires well that's just it's not that's not like complete sets that's just like that's just 10 10 right side sets and then maybe like four inside sets okay okay so it's it's not like complete sets of tires it's you know it's it's pretty much just stuff that we are and it, it's honestly stuff we run on on uh I run for a guy here at Liberty, and it's honestly the stuff I run on his buggy that we run on our Unlimited. It's not it's not anything brand new. It's just used stuff. It's nothing brand new. <laughs> so you you gotta be you gotta be kidding me. No, it's pretty much used tires. I mean, it's you know, I mean, you know, it's just you know, basically some of the tires that 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 that, that I do have there, like the old T threes that that I have they're they're used i mean there's no rubber on them it's pretty much there's no side sidewall left on them it's pretty much just used tires and um you know we, we may bring one new set of tires to a racetrack and uh the the, the tires that we've been uh been 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 running have been the hoosier tires the fk the new fk hoosier tire well, that's that's been one of the new tires that we've we've been um running on the uh unlimited and you know so far it's it's pretty much held out but you know most times it's, it's we you know you, you won't you won't see like brand new sets of tires unless we bring unless we have somebody that that you know wanted us to work them with a set of tires and bring them to the racetrack that'll probably be the brand new set we bring and it goes to a customer jeez well god that's that blows me so 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 the last race you won at patriot that one that paid you 1500 bucks mm-hmm you 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 didn't have new tires on at, at, at all for the, the those were used tires uh yeah those tires uh, came off of my champ buggy uh the um probably two weeks before that race and basically they just sat up in in the shop and hardened up for that race jeez that's crazy wow yeah i mean it's that's a, that dude. That, honestly, that's magic. I'm sitting here. I I, I don't even know what to say. I might mean, because I mean, you know, most people probably think, you know, oh yeah, you know, yeah, he's got, he's got, you know, brand new. He's got all the good, you know, and and, and this just blows me away. Well, I'll say this: when um when the that when the teeth when the when the HT three blue, um thick rubber tire went out went out of date. We pretty much, um, you know, dad knew it because, you know, he was, um, you know, always, you know, we, we, you know, with racing, 
you're always going to talk with your cart shops. You're, you're going to talk, you know, and they're going to let you know what's going on. So your cart shops know, and that was when the Firestone tire was out. So nobody was buying the thick rubber HT3 anymore or the thin rubber. And pretty much that's when they came out with the pink 800 Maxi. That was a, it was a T3, but it was a pink one. And, you know, they didn't make it any in thick rubber. So the T3 uh, is the compound? The, it, it's called a T3, but they, had, they used to have a T3 blue 800 that was a thin rubber tire, and then they had a T3 blue thick rubber. And the thick rubber tires is, you know, it was one that we found worked great with the unlimited stuff because, you know, it was thick rubber. It didn't burn up as bad, and, it, and, it, and it, you, you know, you could run it mm-hmm. and continue to run it. Then um, one of the tires is uh, the, 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 the next, whenever they quit making it, we couldn't find any more. Um, pretty much we talked with our asphalt buddies and they said, well, we're running the T4 blues. We're like the T4s. They're like, yeah, it's an asphalt tire. I'm like an asphalt tire. And pretty much it was a thick rubber, same comp, basically the same style as the, 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 the T3, except instead of having to work the T3 down, like we had to do, the T4 was already a softer compound. So pretty much it was just a tire you, you worked at the racetrack. So wow. I mean, but, and then they quit making that. So when they quit making that tire, we just basically, you know, we're, we're smart. We're going to, you know, you know, at the end of the year, we basically had some money left over from our fund and pretty much that's what we bought. Wow. It was just a couple of cases of those tires. And, you know, those are, you know, those I'll say, I'll say, you know, if, if there's a big race that loves the old T3 or a T4 you know that that we may we may mount up a, just a right side set of that, and then you know whatever we can find on the inside set, we won't mount anything new on it. But you know, I, you know, but as far as I know, Ray, I mean, right now the fastest thing we've we've been able to you know find is just a used set of tires. Jeez. Well, okay, so 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 I can get a few more of these in. Racing wise, what's been your uh, what's been your your What's been the biggest downer for you in, in 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 racing? Is there is there something that you know this pretty much devastated you? Uh, well, I mean, well, I mean, as far as devastating, uh, the the you know the the, the biggest devastation I had was probably back in 2012 at the Grand National event where because uh, I've never finished a Grand National event since 2000, I think 10 or 2009. Um, ever since, you know, the, uh, the big, they, they hosted the, the grand national events. I've never finished one. And pretty much 2012 was the closest I ever got finished. I got taken out on the white flag lap. Uh, were you I leading think, it? Yeah. <laughs> leading it on the last lap and, uh, got stuffed. And, you know, that's one of the, I guess that's, uh, you know, that's where they came up with the rule. You know, if you get taken out on the last lap. You know, you get your spot back. The person that took you out gets black flagged, and you basically go green, white, checkered. Wow. That's, one, that's basically where that when when that rule came into play. So it's um, it is it, it that was probably one of the most devastating you know, terms right. of it because we basically came with our A game and you know just to get stuff like that you know and right then, you know I, I hear you yeah there's but you know that but basically after that race I mean there's you know. Pretty much, you know, I was devastated after the race, but about, you know, 30 minutes to an hour later, I was goofing around back to my, uh, as as the C family calls it, my Jim Carrey self. <laughs> so, pretty much, I was just a big old goofball, and I was just ready for the next race. Well, what was your biggest win? What's, what's been the highest point for you? Oh, man. Um, the the biggest win by far that's mean the most um, most to me has, was... Uh, was uh thanksgiving thunder uh 2000 uh 2012 at uh thanksgiving thunder when i i won that race it was a uh it, it, it was a three thousand to win race and uh it was it was with the chris c family and um i won that race and that by far has been one of the um one of the races that just sticks out in my mind as you know one of the best races um you know that, that i'm you know that, that it was a highlight um of course you know i've won the uh the big Southeast national, the first annual big Southeastern national. Uh, and you know, it was for five grand. That was, that was, you know, a, a good race. Um, but by far the one that sticks out in my mind is that one. Um, right. 
just because of just because uh, where the race was at, um, you know what it meant to win that race. And you know the, the winning the the big southeastern national, you know, was a was a, was a big, uh, you know, it was one of the biggest um, uh, victories that I've I've had. But you know, it's um, the one that sticks out in my mind the most is is uh, that one at uh, Carnesville, Georgia at Thanksgiving Thunder. Sweet. But you know, but as far, go ahead. Um, but as far as you know, uh, if I had to say a, a moment in my mind uh, that 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 isn't, it's uh, basically the. Uh, uh, basically it was a race that i didn't even race that i was you know really stoked about and it was uh it was actually recently it was when uh the the, the little uh robbie yow replacement driver uh named evan c won the thanksgiving thunder that, yeah that was by far because i got to you know i got to talk with him and you know got to you know i i see it as you know kind of letting him you know know what how what to do and you know that you know because he's used to running that that 100 cc class uh the limited um outlaws and he run the unlimited, you know, pretty much, you know, being able to talk with him, let him, you know, know, and, you know, just getting feedback from him. That was, that was probably one of the, you know, coolest moments I've had in racing so far. That's awesome. Well, you know, there, you know, being as successful as you are, I mean, I'm sure you hear gamuts of, of different bits and pieces, but I mean, you know, I've heard, you know, you're, you're, you're uh, a spoiled brat. I've, I've heard you're, you know, you're, you're a whiner um you know a cry baby i mean are you uh well uh, i'll 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 tell you what if you go on the internet and you can see a post where i cried about something and i say yeah i am but i've not you know i don't i don't cry about anything i pretty much you know you know as a racer you know yeah you hate the way things go but you 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 just basically you you pick up you pick up where you left off or where you messed up at and you come back to the next race, and you, you you get at it again. You try and better yourself, and that's the way I always look at stuff. I don't, you know, I, I, yeah, I take a loss, you know, like anybody else would, but you know, I don't let it beat me down. I don't, you know, I don't keep it in the back of my mind, you know. Right. What well, does it? I, I, go ahead. I try and move forward, you know, because the only way you can advance yourself and get better is just to move forward. You can't you can't stick in the past. Yeah, exactly. Well, so does it. Does it hurt you when you hear that stuff? Not really. I mean, I, 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 I mean, yeah. I mean, everyone. I mean, the most common thing you know everyone says is you know since I'm a you know only child you know they always say only chi- only ch- you know childs are spoiled rotten, and that's by far just you know the biggest load of crock I've heard because I've had to the biggest thing I've had to do is I've had to work hard for my stuff and it's it's honestly I can say it's like this I've had you know such a great career and just you know in general just you know been lucky for the places that i've been and basically people have just seen my potential and what i have and they want to see what i can offer to their table and that's basically where it's been and you know i'm i like i I told you i'm very thankful for what i've you know opportunities that i've had and that i've been able to, to to achieve and you know it's just you know i don't i don't i don't see myself as a spoiled brat yeah, I got you. Yeah, I you know, I mean, so so to those that those that have said that, I mean, what's your what, what's your what's your answer to them? Uh, I guess you know. I mean, it's I I really don't have an answer for. Them. I mean, you know, it's like this. There, uh, I look at it this way, Terry. You have you have your people that that that, that talk good about you, and you have your people that talk bad about you. But the one thing in common, they're talking about you. <laughs> yes sir that's so a... i mean if, if if they got nothing else on their mind than to talk about you either whether it be good or bad you know they're not focusing on their stuff they're you know they're, they're you know worried about something else and they you know that's one thing you'll never see me do you'll never see me go on the internet you'll never see me talk bad about anybody i'm you know i i, I respect all all you know everybody that's that's the one thing i look forward to is is respect because that's the one thing we have out there because of the speeds we're traveling you know if there's this hatred that's bold deep down inside you know there's just you know yeah. just, you can't you can't have that you can't you know? have that i mean the, the main thing i go to a racetrack to do is i go to have fun yeah i mean i also go there to win i mean you know we're not gonna just go to a racetrack just to go there and you know ride around i mean the main reason why anybody goes to a racetrack is to try and win but the the the, the the really main reason I like to go to the racetrack is just to have fun and just see how fast I can go. Right. Well, so do you have any aspirations to, to do late models or, or, 
move up or or are you are you okay with where you're at i'm actually um i actually enjoy um racing go-karts i mean uh that's you know that, that's you know that's one of the things that um I, I have enjoyed is just just running go-karts i mean i i you know when i was younger yeah i wanted to i wanted to run i wanted to run you know late models and and get up in there but you know i just never i never had the opportunities to to do that and uh I've, uh, you know, I, I wanted to do that, and the, um, the one thing I've, I, I've always wanted to do, I wanted to run NASCAR. That was one of the biggest things I wanted to do. But then, as the racing got on, I got more involved in seeing what other types of races there were. And I, I really got involved with the, um, the uh, Le Mans, the 24-hour road racing, and you know, that, that was one of the things that I really, you know, I, I was like, you know, I'd like to do that, but those are expensive cars. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, yes, so, they are. And you gotta, you gotta pretty much. They they can't just take a take take a whim because that's that that's that's the way it is now. I mean, you pretty much gotta be, you know, a renowned. You know, you gotta basically have the whole package deal. And you know, it's it's it's, it's kind of hard, you know, just for you know someone to that. But as far as you know, getting you know advanced in my career, you know, I'm 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 pretty well off where where you know right just racing go karts. But one of the nicks that I've had is you know being able to just come to a racetrack and help somebody. Like, uh, when I was at Thanksgiving Thunder, I was helping Chris C, and I, you know, I enjoyed, you know, just coming to the racetrack and helping, you know, even though, you know, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't, you know, race or have a ride, you know, I basically, I was there and I was helping, I was, you know, giving my input. So I could say, you know, probably in the future, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still planning on racing, but, you know, you know, also helping out. Cause that's what I do. Um, whenever it's, uh, I'm away from unlimited is I'm usually at a local track, either racing myself or I'm helping a customer out. That's awesome. So where uh you know so when you see you probably see a lot of beginning racers and, and, and there's probably a, a lot of beginners that uh, look up to you by the way folks uh, those of you just tuning in we're talking to uh robbie yao he's our guest on uh in the groove but so so when you see new racers uh, what do you see what's the biggest thing you see them doing wrong Right. I mean, you know, you, there are they. you know what I'm saying? I mean, what is the, there's got to be a few things that you say, man. Yeah, most I, 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 I get what you're saying. The most thing I see where little kids are doing wrong is they're always looking around They're, You know, they're that uh, like um, my, 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 my girlfriend's little girl. She she races and her her main problem is she likes to look around. And, you know, it's, 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 it's been, you know, it's, it's, it's tough with kids. I'll say that I've learned that it's tough with kids. But, you know. Um, pretty much, you know, you, you have, you know, they, they just want to, you know, they're, they're just learning. They're either afraid and you got to kind of get them used, used to it. Right. And, you know, the easiest way I found that out with kids, you know, that are like starting like beginner red plate or, you know, kid card or, you know, junior one is pretty much just limit their throttle, you know, just basically get it to where they're comfortable holding it wide open with not having all the, all of it wide open, kind of like put a bump stop on the throttle. So they're 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 comfortable speed, and you just gotta work with them. I mean, that's one thing that I've I've you know seen with um with little kids, and um now you know, how, at racetracks, uh, little kids always you know that's one thing. That's where I got my, my first nickname was my nickname's you know Robbie the Kid Yow, hence the kid because every time you'll see me at a racetrack, little kids always come up to me. They you know it's they always look up to me, and you know I, I always you know basically I'm a big kid myself. Yeah, amen to that. Well, so what about adults? What do you what do you see when you got a guy that's maybe just getting started in the UAS? I mean, what what do you see? You know, I mean, is there something that you say, "Wow," you know? I mean, what advice would you give him? Well, it's um, it's actually me and my dad were actually talking about this today, and you know, whenever he first saw the unlimited run, you know, there was the, there was nothing in their um, in their in their you know logic to get to get hooked to the racetrack it was they wanted horsepower they wanted as much horsepower as they could get and you know they weren't getting their stuff hooked up and pretty much that's you know someone getting started you know that's that's one thing that you know i can see wrong is you know they're just not getting their stuff hooked down to the track you know they've got all this you know you can you can you can you know take all the money in the world and buy the best of the best but unless you can get it hooked up you're not really going to go anywhere Hmm. So it, it, and honestly, and it, it's 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 come down to you know it's it's basically a, a a tire game. It's not it's not so much as horsepower wise. It's much a it's more or less it's it's getting 
getting the four the four round ladies hooked to the ground. That's, wow. That that's what it that's what it boils down to. That's but but that's always that you know that's easier said than done, right? Yeah, I mean it, it, it's honestly it's it's basically like school. You do your homework. You gotta you gotta put the time in. Basically, my dad told me this. He said. He said, "How you run is how you work on your stuff during the week. If you don't work on it, you're not going to run good. If you if you work on it and you work decently on it, you'll run decently. But if you put all the time that you want in it, you know, which I mean, yeah, time is of the essence. You know, most people don't have all the time in the world to work on stuff, and they're you know not not fortunate enough to work on it. But still, you know, if you put some time into it, some time is better than no time." Right, I, and I agree. So, what about taking notes? Is that important? Uh, yes. Um, when uh, whenever I go to a track, I you know I'll 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 put a, a mental note in my brain of what you know if I've been to the track before. If I have never been to the track, I'll keep a notebook and you know be like, this is what the track was at this time of day, and you know this is what we went out on. This is what the cart did. And if we changed something, if we went with a harder set or a softer set or we did a different compound. You know, it basically just mental notes, and then that notebook will just stay with us. And pretty much when we go to a different track, you know, or we go back to that track, we'll look back at the notes because that's that's a good thing to keep in, you know, in in your trailer or your truck. Just you know, a general notes of what you did. Like you could keep what gear you had on, Mm -hmm. and you know, if when you go back, you'll be like, okay, well, we went to this, we were on this gear, and it was wet. But now the track, you know, it's summertime. The track's a lot drier. It's going to be faster. We'll need to change gear. And, you know, it's just, you know, it's just, you know, mental notes. And just basically, like I said, it's it's basically like, uh, you know, school. You, you know, you got to you got to do your homework. And, you know, it, it, it you can you can see the people that do their homework and you can see the people that don't. That That's that's what I, I'll say I've noticed. And it's just, you know, it's just time and effort. But what you put into it is what you get out of it. Amen. And that's then that's what I preach all the all the time. So let me ask you this. We got a few more before before we let you go, but who's your toughest competitor? Oh man. Um I I'll say my toughest competitor, uh, And it can go way back. I mean, just one of the toughest guys you've ever run against. Uh, well, back in the day, it was, uh, Shea Chavis. Uh, Shea Chavis was one of my toughest competitors, um, running against him. Uh, he was, you know, it was, it was, you know, week in and week out. Um, and him, Matt Hope, uh, they were, you know, tough competitors. Uh, but as, as far as, you know, you know, there, there's so many, um, good, um, you know, I mean, every unlimited driver, you know, is, has got talent because, you know, if they didn't, they wouldn't be in the sport, but, you know, you know, you, there are the best of the best, and there's the good of the good. But you know, my toughest competitor, honestly, is myself because I always, you know, I try and you know, you know, beat myself. You know, that's that's wow. what I try and do because I I know if I can beat myself, then I I can you know pretty much have a good decent run. Um, but as far as you know, tough competitors that I run against now, I mean, it's it's um. You know, there's just so many that, you know, that are good out there, but I don't get to, you know, run against them much because it's just whenever they decide to show up at the racetrack. Right. It's, uh, you know, because, you know, the, I, I, like I, I told you earlier in the week, I don't do much. Um, I didn't I didn't do much unlimited racing this year. Uh, I think, you know, maybe six or seven races is all I raced out of the whole season. So, um, but, I mean, there's there's so, there's so many uh, good, good competitors um, worldwide. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, one of the, one of the toughest ones, like if I come to a track and he's there is uh Robbie Sarchet. He's one of the tough ones. Wes Snow is another tough one. Um, Michaela Stark, uh, Jerry Mullis with, um, with the, uh, PRC. Yep. yep. Jerry Mullis can roll. I, I saw a lot of these guys when I went and did the insane one. Um, it wasn't any unlimited stuff. They were all on the clone stuff, but boy. Um, yeah, I mean, Jerry Mullis, he's, he's without a doubt, you know, one of, one of the best of the best drivers out there. Um, but and uh, but as far as, as, as the best driver, um, I mean, I've always, I've always wanted to outrun D. Pascal, which, uh, you know, and, and you know, if, 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 uh, if, if, if he could get back in the seat, I'd like to try and uh, run against Chris C. See, uh, you know. So so C was tough? C C was C was tough. 
C was, you know, one of the tough compared. Uh, it was basically, from what I remember in the unlimited days, it was, uh, you know, way back. It was, it was always, it was always uh, Chris C, D Pascal, and Barrett Terry. Those were the three God. top names you you, you could rem- that you, that well that I could remember. Yeah, um, that's but, cool. You know, I got to meet Barrett Terry at the uh, at the insane one too. He was a, I thought he was cool because he had my name. You know, his last name's my first name, so that that was pretty cool. But yeah, good stuff, man. Wow. And uh, but but basically, getting in whenever I was in the unlimited, it's the the one to to, to beat if he was at the track. You know, was D Pascal you know because he was in the seat still and you know that was one of the ones to, to outrun but i mean like i said there's so many tough competitors out there you know it's, you can't just say that you have one tough competitor because all your right. competitors are tough but so think... you know but but you're you're like i said your main competitor that you're wanting to outrun is yourself well you know that's awesome man my, my last question for you um is um because it's where you run and it is where your passion is is what's how do you what's the nature of the UAS as you see it right now, and where do you see it in five years? Um, well, that's a tough question. Um, I mean, I can tell you whenever I first started in the Unlimiteds, it it was nowhere. Um, it, you know, it, it was it was basically every weekend was a race. There was a race somewhere, and you, you traveled. I mean, you just travel to a race just to go race against, you know, competitors. And now it's just broken up where you stay in your region and you, you basically can, you really only have to run two races and then you go and r- meet everybody else at a big national event. And, you know, that's pretty much it. You don't really travel anywhere. I mean, you don't really have people that want to travel or, you know, cause you know, the economy is bad, but you know, I mean, this is, you know, it isn't where it was when I, when it first started. So, you know, and, you know, things have changed, you know, stuff costs more, you know, we're getting into the higher engine packages, you know, people can't travel and go to different races, you know, you know, some people have the luxury to do that. Some people just, you know, they would just want to stay in their local circuit. But um, as far as getting, you know, to run, you know, I remember whenever I ran that you had, you know, they took the six best of your regional races and then they had four four quarter points um nationals uh, uh spring summer went uh fall and winter national and they took the best two of those you ran and you had to travel cuz they had two down south two up north and you know you basically you, you you basically you had to go and run them to you know so you know you could keep someone from someone else from getting the points or you know you could just basically take it all and, you know, it, it just boiled down to who wanted to travel and who wanted it the most. But as far as uh, seeing where the Unlimiteds go in the next couple of years, um, I mean, it, it, if the point system stays the way it's said, I mean, the numbers have fallen down as the years have gone. Because gone. I remember the first, when they did the first point system, they had like 60-some carts at the first national event. And, you know, this past national, there was, I, I don't even think there was maybe not even 30 there. Wow, so, yeah. That's that's, the car, that's crazy. The car, which you know, like I said, the economy's falling down. The, you know, the, you know, you, 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 people, you know, they don't want to travel. Or they don't have the means to travel. So, that's another another factor. Um, so you, you know, and most most of your unlimited guys that used to run, they got out of it because you know all these high horsepower motors came in and they couldn't afford it. Because like I said, you ran against Sedan one thirty ones and. You know, then the next the next couple engine packages that came out of that was the BRC 150 and the Wankel, and then the then they started allowing the Jawas and the 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 you know the 450s and the 252 strokes and and the 500 cc motors. You know, basically they allowed that in there. Pretty much, it was um you know just. You know, it's, it's 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 just you know it's changed it since now. I'll say I'll say it'll probably be better if they can you know s- slim it down some, and maybe you know if if the next you know big package comes out, which no telling what that's going to be, what they allow, but you know might be a leader motor. Do you think it, it it might? Um, you know, I mean, I, I could see them wanting to you know. If if they want to, you know, if they want to put more horsepower, you know, down there, I mean, you know, that's, you know, that's, you know, it's it, it it's it, it'd be fun to see it hook up, but, you know, I I I would honestly say a a, a big twin a twin package on two stroke would be it. Like if they would allow a 
uh, you know, dual 150s. Why wouldn't? Why couldn't you run that now? There's, I don't think there's a rule, is there? Uh, there, there is a rule. You're not allowed to go over, I think, 100 or 125 cc's on twins. Oh. So if you have twin 150s, see, we have a twin, uh, I think, 125s or 100s that we ran, and that, that that they were pretty much as big as you could go. But as far as twin water cooled, you know, that that that'd probably be if they allowed that package, that'd be one of the coolest packages to to, to see run. Yeah, be a twin a twin 150 brc. Um, that you yeah. know, if you go to Riley Will's site, uh, they they show one uh, that they he, did. He's got a he's got a two fifty. Um, he's got a two fifty uh, BRC two fifty that he's running now. But um, uh, uh, we haven't. I don't think we've 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 had the luxury of running that one yet. But uh, we've pretty much had the one fifty CC water cooled, and you know we've we we showed a package at one of the cart shows of a twin uh, BRC one fifty. Yeah, tell me that wouldn't be a ride. Oh, it's it, it's it's more horsepower than a Fiat 500, an actual car. <laughs> and we we had a it, it was is is you know it's pretty awesome. Which you know Fiat, you know it's not a high horsepower car, but still it's you know it's yeah. a good example. It's a car. It can go you know from you know you know a hundred some miles an hour. So. It, it, it's it's it was one of the packages we you know we have we have the idea of getting it started but you know it basically would be a run what you brung type deal it, you know because that's the only class it'd be able to run in. Well, here's what I know: when you do run it, I w- I want to be there to see it. Well, that's gonna have to be up to Chris. Um, <laughs> you know, I've got he's got to basically you know uh, we we had it on the cart and we pretty much uh, you know it's kind of just been an option an idea in our head uh, we. You know, kind of didn't put the foot forward, but, you know, me and his son, Austin, you know, kind of itched at him trying to get it going again. But it's, you know, it's it's, it's just, you know, it's 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 definitely a dangerous package because I don't, you know, that that's, you know, that's a lot of a lot of horsepower hitting the ground. That's 110, 110, 116 horsepower. Yeah, that's a that's a boy, well, you know, and I believe that there, there gets a point where, I mean, even this 500 stuff, it's to the point now where if you put any more power on these things i mean you you, you they're they're gonna need a cage or they're gonna need something i mean because well, it's just it's just nuts well see that's the thing with the with with this high horsepower stuff you know uh, you know there was a, there was a controversy of you know people you know trying to you know you know I, I'm, I'm not naming any names but cheating up a motor and you know trying to make it go faster i'll tell you one thing it's hard enough just to hook up the 500 that we have I can't see you hooking up anything more more powerful than that because you don't need it. If uh, I mean, it, I'll take it in, into a prime example. If you could take and um, must uh, are are you a Mustang fan? Uh, I, I I mean I I'm not a Ford guy, no, but I mean still. Okay, well I'm using Mustang just for this reason and purpose. You take a Ford Mustang GT500, Shelby GT500. It's you know it's the the you know probably one of the you know fastest Mustangs that that are out there stock, and you know it's so much horsepower to hook up. Well, if you take a Boss 302 Mustang, it's the same exact chassis setup, just a smaller engine package, and it'll outrun a GT500 any given day of the week. So if you get what I'm saying, you can take all the horsepower you want if you don't get it hooked up. You're not going to go anywhere, but you can take a smaller package and get it hooked up and just go as fast. And right. that's what that's what we've 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 shown that numerous times with the BRC 150. It's a smaller package that can get hooked up if we can if you know you can get it you know basically if you can get it get it get it get it down on weight right and get it hooked up to the track, nothing will run with it. I mean, it's it's one of those one of those small packages that can that can run with the big motors. Well, so when you were at Patriot and you won that fifteen hundred dollar, what was it the 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 freeze or the thaw or something that you that you just won? Uh, yeah, it was the uh, God, what was that called? I think the the it was the it was the big Southeast International, I believe, is what it was. Um, so, the race that, that that it was, but it was the fall brawl. Yes, that's what it was. Well, what were you twisting? What were you twisting that GM uh, there? Um, honestly, it, it was probably running about 
8,900. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't twisting. It wasn't twisting, you know. I mean, you know, like these other guys, they're running probably 95 to 10 grand um, on, on their tax. You know, it, it was just, it was just basically a, the lug in the motor because the four cycle likes to lug the more you can lug it the faster it'll go i mean it doesn't it doesn't like high rpms right you know well yeah because you're not high rpms just means that you have so much torque that's spinning off the corner you're not you're not you know you're not getting any traction and you know that's one thing that you know we we try and emphasize is just getting the motor to lug and that's where you know that's that's you know we just have you know we we kind of you know basically are our team so we put all our heads together and we say this is going to work and we try it and it works if it doesn't then we try but i'll tell you what that whole entire day i was sideways i was couldn't get the rear end hooked up and we were fighting it all day and then finally everybody was fighting it because you couldn't get hooked up the track it was basically who could get hooked up to the track and pretty much the only one that was hooked up at, on the track was austin who was on the brc 150 but he was still spinning so, that, that you know, smaller package right yeah yeah so he, he got hooked up, but you so, went by him. You once you got by him, though, boy. I mean, at least on the film, it was it was like lights out. Yeah, I mean, we basically like any pretty much that race. Any any time we came in and we sat on the cart stand, we we didn't just go and sit in a in a chair. We we pretty much did a change. We made a change, and we pretty much after qualifying, I basically sat down with my dad and I said, Dad. I said, this cart, we need to make a change. I said, you know, I'm having this trouble. So he changed the tires, and I changed the chassis setup. And what we changed, I was able to run it in deeper. And, yeah, I was still, you know, sideways coming down the straightaway. You can't really see it that well in the video, but I was, you know, a little sideways coming down the, the, the straightaway. But, you know, basically I just got it to where I could just drive it in and drive it off the corner, and pretty much we ended up, you know, basically blistering what, what, the, what the fastest time of qualifying was. Yeah, you were you were you were quite good. In the I mean, it, it's imp I mean, I've shared that thing. I don't know how many times um, it, just because it's it's so awesome. So you don't you you think the UAS is in good shape. It's not going anywhere. You don't foresee it doing anything like that. Right. Um, you know, as, as far as going anywhere, if, 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 if it could get some type of better form of marketing out there or promotions, I could see it growing and becoming what it needs to become. But, you know, as far as, you know, with what it is now, you know, it's just my opinion. I, I, I don't, you know, I don't, you know, I, I don't see, you know, it, 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 you know, unless there can be some better promotions for these races. Cause I mean, we honestly down here, down South, I mean, the UAS classes, you know, unless it's like a thousand dollars to win with a 15 cart minimum, you know, we don't really see 15 carts at, 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 at an unlimited event, unless it's guaranteed money. Now that that's, that's the only for seen, you know, there'll be, you know, there was like eight, seven or eight go-karts in that fall brawl race, but it was guaranteed a thousand dollars. So, you know, it, 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 it's, you know, it's usually just seen as an exhibition class or just, you know, a, a fence watching class. People draw to the fence to watch these classes because it's high horsepower. It's loud. It's fast. See, that's Everybody an insult to me. That's a that's a complete insult to me. I, I just yeah. I find that like an insult, really. Well, I mean, yeah, because the, the unlimited we spend so much money, we should be running for, you know, you know, some some high purses. And, you know, it just boils down to getting the promotions out there and getting. You know, but, you know, there's not that many down here. There's, you know, you know, seven or eight show up. You know, that's that's all fine and dandy. But I remember when there'd be like 20 or 30 just at a regular Saturday night event. Yeah, see, and, and I think it's really uh, it's a numbers game, right? That's why the clone guys are running for so much money, because there's a million of them. I mean, I yeah, mean, I mean, it's, it's like I told you, most people got out of Unlimited, like people I used to race against that I look forward to coming to the track because, you know, when you go to the track, People you race against, they're your racing family. You, you know, you're, you're considered family, and you know you always look forward to seeing them. But then whenever you know you call them up, be like, "Hey, man, why weren't you at this race?" Well, they changed the rules. You know, they, you know, all this new high horse horsepower stuff's out there, and you know, you know, some people can't afford it. You know, there there is that there is that 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 you know people that that can't afford the high horsepower engines. They can't you know afford to compete against them. So they they look at it like, well, why bother even showing up? Yeah, that's too that's too bad. So do you do you think they need to break it should they break it down into uh I mean that that's not going to work either, is it? 
Well, no, because I mean, you know, they you, you can't you can't you know take. I don't think you could take something that you've already had going and then break it down to and you know basically say that it's it's not 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 able to to do this. You you, you can't do that. You've got to be able to you know allow it to run just like uh just just like uh well like all know, the Sudam stuff you know and and all that stuff. I mean, you know, it's still out there. There's a gob of it out there. But but you know, like you said, they feel like they can't run. So maybe should they break it up to where it's um, say like, for example, all the uh, I don't know, all the big all the big motors run, and and then then anything under this or that runs its deal. So so that you're not alienating all those guys that feel like they can't run. I mean, they could do that, but then you know, it it it'd be like you know, it'd be like you know bullying like you know only these motors can run this class and you know this you know it, it you know it's it's, so, it's hard to say because i mean yes I, I could see you know making that transition you know having just the bigger motors run against them and then having the smaller motors run against them but then you have your guys with the smaller motors that that actually run up run up in in the top you know can can run with the big motors so that 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 cancels them out because they're like well i can outrun these i can i can run with these motors because you know at a small track like if you take like a bull ring like a a a tenth or a twelfth of a mile racetrack you know a little bitty motor is going to go faster than a big motor because it can get hooked up a lot easier it can go way faster than the big motors can just just because of hookup and you know that, that 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 you know that 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 basically takes it takes you know, you know you, you, you can't you kind of have to have you know there's got to be like a median. I mean, if, if if it was up to me, I'd say you know just you know the big motors. You know that's basically you know everybody should just you know if if, if everybody could afford a big motor, you know then that that's where it should be because pretty much that's what you see when you come to track. You see you know you see CRF 450s or you know the the, the, the 252 strokes or the 500 cc jawas and gms and mm-hmm. you know you, you see you that's the main packages that you see and then you'll see a brc 150 here and there or or you'll see one of the buller 250s um you know it's just you know there's there's just so many packages out there that's the thing you know and it's just whatever you can afford or whatever you fit you whatever you you know you're running because it used to be it used to be nothing but Buller Sedan 131s. That was the main engine package that was there, and there was a couple of four cycle guys. Right. And then you know it was it was still the 131, and then there was the Winkle. And you know the Winkle was the thing to to to, to that everybody you know complained about, and it got thrown. The weight got thrown to it so many times, and then finally, you know you don't hear anything of a Winkle now. I mean I I haven't heard of a Winkle winning a race any race. And you know everybody was so scared about it, but now you don't hear about it. It's 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 faded out. It's it's you know it's a, it's a fade. It just faded. But you know it's I, I if it was up to me, you know I'd you know whenever they were having controversy of the Wanko stuff, we always joked around as uh, my dad and Charlie stuff, and we we're like you know we should just have unlimited classes run clone engines weighing 430 pounds everybody's happy they're running the, they're running the same thing they weigh the same everybody's happy because you know the bigger guys are like well i'm on this 131 and i'm like 80 pounds overweight well get a you know if you have a get on a diet practice. get on a diet well see that's like right now i'm on a diet um chris chris has got me on a diet because you know we're coming to the bk9 and uh i'm basically having to diet down because i gotta i gotta find a way to weigh 350 pounds on a little bitty engine here i am you know weighing 430 pounds on a big engine i think we got maybe a 15 pound block and a 10 pound block on it so <laughs> i'm I've, I've been on a diet since uh since thanksgiving that basically thanksgiving was like my last full meal i've ever had <laughs> i've been, I've, been I've on, ever I've had been on, <laughs> yeah literally literally like i've been on salad boiled chicken and water and you know almonds that's basically my my diet regimen and running you know five miles a day or trying to run five miles a day and trying to work out and you know just trying to get down to where i'm i'm a, I'm a, I'm a smooth 145 so. well, so, what are you, where are you at now i'm about i'm about 148 149 
Well, so you're right so, there, and you want to be 145. That's only three pounds, man. If if I could get down to 135, it'd be a lot better. Oh, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Well, so, how tall are you? I'm uh, five, five, six, five, seven. Oh wow! So you're the perfect so, you're the perfect go kart size then. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's I I I I'll say you know that that's that's one thing that my dad's told me. He says you're small, you're low center of gravity. He says we don't care what you weigh because we can always add weight and put put it where we need it. Yep, and that's what you want. I mean, uh, you, you you're a lot like uh, you're a lot like Phil Fowl. He he's he's the perfect go kart racer. Well, he was at one time, but um, yeah, you guys are that's wow. It's gonna be yeah, see, epic. You coming up here for sure. Yeah, I mean we're 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 definitely stoked and excited just 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 you know coming up there because I I think we've been called out the last couple of years, but we never really you know came. And this year we basically sat down. We're like, we're going to the BK nine. Let's just, you know, let's go up there and see what we got. So, you know, we're, we're coming up there and we're, we're, you know, we're going to bring all that we got and try and do the best we can. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it's definitely going to be a fun experience because I love running, running dirt indoor. That's one of my favorite things to do is, is, uh, run a dirt indoor. Cause it's always fast and you know, it's, it's, it's right on the edge. Yeah, and you're going to have some good boys to run against, you know, Diotti and Chase and, you know, Stackman and Co – I mean, there's going to be some good shoes up there, so. Yeah, and I, I, I rarely get to run against them. Like, the only time I'll get to run against them is at, at, at a Grand National event. So, you know, it'll be cool to, you know, get to run against, against those guys, you know, in a non-national event standard, you know, because, you know, I always look at the, whenever they, those guys post their videos, and, you know, I, I'm like, well, dang, I said, that, that, that looks like fun right there. Yeah. And, you know, I – you know, it, it's, 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 you know, it's one of those things like, you know, it'd be cool if they could, you know, come out here, you know, whenever we have a big event. But, you know, I know that, you know, they have their races they've got to run and, you know, they kind of fall on the same weekends. But, you know, it's, you know, I'm going to say this, you know, I'm coming out there for one of their events. Maybe, maybe those guys can come out here one time for some of our events. Man, I'm telling you what, um, I'm coming to Patriot. I, I, man, I, I just, after watching the couple times I've watched there, I'm like, that is on my bucket list for sure. The Patriot is definitely, a, definitely a fast track to come to. I mean, it's 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 one of the good good racetracks that you know fast horsepower can can definitely get around it. Yep, that's that that's awesome. Well, man, you know what? We've been we've been talking for almost an hour and a half, which is which is really cool. I I, I hopefully all the all the listeners dig it, and um, and so, uh, man, I, I just got to say, um, here's what I know, all right? I mean, people can say what they want. Um, it's it's still one of those things that your parents taught you, you know? You, you, you got you to gotta treat people how they treat you, obviously, and, and you can't always um, go by what other people, you know, think. But I, I appreciate your candor. I, I appreciate your, your total transparency and... Uh, you know, man, in my book, I mean, you're there's a reason you're a champ and you're fast every week because uh, you, you, you just get it. So, I mean, I'm I'm a fan. I'll, I'll tell you that I'm a fan for sure. Well, well, thank you for that. Uh, that. That actually means a lot to me. Yeah, I'm mean, seriously, because, you know, you hear a lot of stuff and whatnot. But until you meet somebody and you actually get to talk to them, you know, I, all I'm going to say is people there's. You gotta, you just gotta remember, and, and and that's one of the reasons why I did it because I wanted people to to really get to know who who you are, and, and and you know people can judge for themselves then that way they don't have to you know they don't have to listen to to somebody else who who might be a hater or you know whatever the the case may be, but you're always gonna have those. But hey, man, it sounds like you're uh, you rise above all that. Personally, I think you're a great guy, and and I can't wait to I can't wait to hook up with you at the BK because we're gonna have some fun, man. Oh yeah, man. Hey, the BK, I'm gonna bring you a chair. I mean, you can just sit down and, and continue talking if you want to. Man, I would That's... love that. I would love that. I would. You know, I'm gonna get C in on it. You know, and who knows? I I'm, I might try to hook up some sort of a racers roundtable where we just record everybody BSing. <laughs> I think that would just be super cool. Well, well, you get my dad talking. You know, it's gonna be hard to get him to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will go ahead and warn you on that. Well I, well, I understand he don't like to fly, though. He does not like to fly. I have never 
seen him get on an airplane. So he is actually going to fly out there, and we're we're flying out. So it's going to be, I think, his first flight. Um, because his, his favorite quote is um is a Bible verse, and it's "Lo, I be with you." Wow. So um, so basically, you know, he he he, he you know, he's kind of a comedian. So you know, he, he kind of sees it as uh, instead of "Lord, I be with you," it's "Lo, I be with you." So he's he's kind of a ground person. So um, but he's actually flying out with us. It's um, it's Chris, my dad. Um, I think Evan is Evan's coming and and me. And you know, we're we're you know shipping our stuff out there, and we're we're going to be flying out there. But he's definitely non a non non flyer. He he likes to stay on the ground. Well, what what, what is it? How do, let me see if I can do it right. Well, damn it, boy. Yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's it. It's a uh, it's, uh, damn it, boy. On, uh, on his, on his, on his by far favorite quote is, know, know what I mean? You know what I mean? Damn it, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those those are those are definitely the two. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> well, hey, Robbie Yao, thanks for being on the show, man. I I sure appreciate it. Uh, no problem, man. Thank you again for having me. It it, it meant a lot to me. Yeah, you betcha. expensive things you'll do in your life are buy a house, educate your kids, and go racing. What you don't need is another expense, and that's why you take your car and tow rigs to True Tech Automotive. 
to ensure that they are maintained and repaired the right way with the right parts at the right price. And how's this for right? Extended to all racers is the In the Family 25% discount off of all preventative maintenance and repair labor. All you have to do is use the discount code NWRR to save. Now that's right. Get it done the right way. The True Tech way. True Tech Automotive, 6900 Northeast Highway 99, Hazeldell, Washington. 360-571-2302. Racing. It's preparation. It's focus. It's attention to detail. And when you try to take shortcuts, it shows. At Speed City, Southern Oregon's karting headquarters, distributor for Ultramax, Legend, QRC, Bell Helmets, and K1 Race Gear, they don't roll like that. Speed City is committed to roll the way champions roll by keeping racers on track with knowledge, integrity, and performance. No shortcuts, no negativity, no other motives. You don't just have their word on it, you've got their name on it. So get back to having fun and get to calling Speed City. Speed City, LLC, keeping racers on track with quality service and friendship. 541-531-1222. 